Good afternoon everyone and today it's Wednesday and today is uh, we're going to get into uh, systematic theology uh, lecture 7 which we're going to be talking about uh, the doctrine of angels uh, the doctrine of spiritual warfare such as the doctrine of demons and the doctrine of Satan and so um, before we start let's pray first Father, we just thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. We we ask, Lord, that you, that you would cleanse our hearts, Lord, and cleanse our minds, God, and help us, Lord, to realize what does the Bible say about, you know, angels, and Lord, help us, Lord, to understand about angels, Lord. Help us, Lord, to understand your word, Lord, through this time. God, I just thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's start with the doctrine of angels. Now, in you know, the, the, there's a lot of different views on angels. Um and so number one, uh, you know, angels are created spiritual beings with moral judgment and high uh intellectual but without a physical bodies, okay. So we can see this in uh, number one, created spiritual beings, and uh, we see this in Colossians chapter one. And this time I'm going to be reading uh, some of the scriptures, not a whole lot, um, but you know, I just want to read some of the scriptures. And Colossians. Colossians uh, chapter 1 verse 6. Oh, sorry, verse 16. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they are thrones or, do or um, dom dominations or principalities or powers all things were created by him by him and for him okay and then we see this in Psalms uh, 148 verse 2 and 5 uh, even in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 which I will read to you that um, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to minister to those who will inherit salvation? Oh, I should never read this in, the, in context. Uh, verse 13. But to which of the angels did he at any time say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstools? Okay. <laughs> In context, they're talking about uh, angels, and I and I really encourage you to read um, Hebrews. What was it? Hebrews. Oh, I thought I thought. I th okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hebrews 1 uh, verses 5 through 14. It talks about the Son superior to angels. And then it talks again in Luke chapter 4, uh, 24 verse 39. Now th there's other names of angels uh, as well. Uh, like the sons of God. Uh, lowercase s. Uh, Job chapter 1 verse 6. Uh, we got... Holy One, all lowercase, uh, Psalms 89, verses 5 through 5 and 7, Watchers in Daniel chapter 4, verse 13. Okay, kinds of heavenly beings there's the uh, cherubims in Psalms uh, 18, verse 10, and again in Ezekiel chapter 10, verses 1 through 22. They are uh, Cherubim, if I if I pronounce that right, uh, 
And you can see this in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 5 through 14 and Revelation chapter 4 verses 6 through 8. Number 4. Uh, ranks in order among the angels, which I can't find a scripture for that. And I did look for it uh, in the textbook, but I guess there, there's none. Uh, five, there's uh, names of Pacific angels. Uh, we see this in Jude chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 through 8. Alright, number six. <clears throat> number six. Only one place at one time. So angels can only go one place at a time. Uh, we see this in Luke chapter 1 verse 26 through, uh, yeah, no, Luke chapter 1 verse 26, pardon me, uh, in Daniel chapter 10 verses 12 through 14. Number 7, how many angels are there? Uh, we see this in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 and in Psalms 68 verse 17. Number eight, do people have individual guardian angels? Now, um, you know, uh, you know, my girlfriend talked about, you know, do you believe in guardian angels? And I said, you know, may, maybe not, but it may be, you know, I may, I may change it. But scripture clearly te uh, t uh, tells us that God sends angels for our protection. Uh, the only scripture I can find that is in Psalms 91 verses 11 through 12. And I'm going to say, you know, now I believe that God did send angels to protect us. Number nine, uh, angels do not marry. Uh, Matthew chapter 22 verse 30. And also in Luke chapter 20 verses 34 through through 36. Number 10, the power of angels. Um, let's take a look at Psalms. As you know, let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 1, uh, verse 21. It says, "Far above all principalities, and power, and mighty, and and domination, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come." Okay. All right. Well. Um. And then see, and, and then it reads it. Uh, well, it tells us again in uh, Psalms one hundred three verse twenty, and also in Colossians chapter one verse sixteen, as we read. Uh, the place of angels in God's purpose. Number one, angels show the greatness of God's love and plan for us, and we see this in First Corinthians chapter six verse three. And Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7. Number 2. Angels remind us that the unseen world is real. Acts chapter 23, verse 8. And 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17. Number 3. Angels carry out some of God's plan. And we see this in Luke chapter 1, verses 11 through 19. Acts chapter 8 verse 26 and also in Acts chapter 10 verse 3 through 8 um, and uh, Daniel chapter 10 verse 16 4 angels directly glorify God Psalms 103 uh, verse 20 and Isaiah chapter 6 verses 2 and, two and 3 5 
we should be aware of angels in our daily lives. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 to 23. Now there's, there's some warnings. Okay. Number six, beware of receiving false doctrines from angels. I'm going to read to you 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse uh, fourteen. Don't you know me? Um, read this in context. I start with verse twelve, and I will continue doing what I am doing, that I may cut off the opportunity of of sorry from those who does who desire an opportunity to be found equal to us in what they boast about. For such uh, sorry, for such are false apostles and deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if he ministers also disguises themselves as ministers of righteousness uh, and woes and will be according to their works. Okay, see, Paul warning us, be careful of what you're receiving, uh, you know, false doctrine. You know, even even Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light. That's what, hap that's what happens with uh, the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, with his false teachings, and that what happened with Joseph Smith, and look what happened now. Uh, the, the the Mormons were born basically, and they are very very deceived. So, yeah. So be careful. Be very very careful. Number seven. Do not. Worship angels, pray to them, or seek them. Let me read this in Second Chron, uh, yeah, Second Chron, no, uh, not Second Chron, Colossians chapter two, verse eighteen. Do not let anyone cheat you of your reward by the lightning. I'm oh, sorry, the the. Lightning and false humility and the worship of angels dwell of those things which he has not seen, vainly arrogant do to his unspiritual mind. Paul made it clear do not worship angels, do not pray to them. Do not seek them. Number eight. Do angels appear to people today? Uh, you know, uh, the Bible says that we attain angels unaware. You know, I, I, I don't know if, if I'm talking to an angel. I don't, you know, I just don't know. Um, but, but, but we see there in the book of Acts, uh, chapter 8, verse 26. Acts chapter 10, verse 3, verse 6, and Acts chapter 12, verses 6 through 11. Okay. Let's move on to the doctrine of Satan, demons, and spiritual warfare, which is one of my favorite topics. Now, what is the uh, definition of demons? Demons are evil angels. Who sin against God and who now continually work evil in the world? Uh, a the the origin the origin of demons, and we see this in Genesis chapter three, verse one through five. We see this again in Second Peter chapter two, verse four, 
And we see this also in Jude chapter 6. Uh, sorry, Jude verse 6. B. Satan is the per personal name of the head of the demons. And we see this in Job chapter 1 verse 6. Uh, Satan means adversary. And, and some call the, the accusers of the brethren. We see this in Luke chapter 10 verse 18. He is called the devil. Uh, Matthew chapter 4 verse, verse 1. And Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. He is called serpent in Genesis chapter 3 verse 11 and 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. Sometimes, you know, he called Beelzebub. Matthew chapter 10 verse 25. Luke chapter 11 verse 15. He also called the ruler of this world. John chapter 12 verse 31. John chapter 16 verse 11. Um... Satan is also called the prince of the power of the air. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse, verse 2. And lastly, he, he also known as the evil one. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 19. C. The activity of Satan and demons. Uh, Satan was the originator of sin. Uh, remember in... in uh, Genesis chapter three verses one through six, he Satan you know tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit, and again in John First uh, John chapter three verse sixteen I'm uh, sorry verse verse eight talked about you know Satan sin way in the beginning, okay. Number two, demon oppose and try to destroy every work of God, again in. You know, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And John chapter 8, verse 44. Okay? Number 3. Yet demons are limited by God's control and have limited power. We see this in Job chapter 1, verse 12. We see this in Jude, verse 6. And we see this again in... James chapter 4 verse 7. Number 4. Differing stages of demonic activity. We see this uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 16 through 17. And Psalm 106 verses 35 through 37. Uh, even during, uh, during uh, Jesus' ministry. We see this in Matthew chapter 12, verses 28 through 29. He is also referred as the strong man. C. During the new covenantal age, uh, authority over demonic powers was not limited to the apostles. And we see this in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. We see this again in Mark chapter 3, verse 15. And also we see this again in Luke chapter 10, verse 17. 1. Jesus gave all believers authority to rebuke demons and command them to leave. We do have the power to do this. You know, don't be deceived. Don't be ignorant of what the scripture says. Uh, the Bible says that we have the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. The Bible says. Uh... We have the authority to cast out demons. That doesn't matter if it if they're oppressed. Doesn't matter if it if they're uh, possessed by a demonic spirit. We have to cast them out anyway. If you are if you're dealing dealing with um, pornography, you can cast that out in Jesus' name. If you're if you're um, you know the, the, there there's different spirits. Uh, demonic spirits uh, like the the spirit of Jezebel you gotta rebuke that fast and pray and rebuke that demon we all got to have the sense of you know because the Christians should be having the power of Christ in them the Holy Spirit should be the one 
to not only to discern the, the spirits, but also you have the power to cast them out in Jesus' name. I tell you, this is the most important part of the Christian walk. Doesn't matter if you are dealing with a little teeny tiny, uh, you know, if, if 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 there's a chink in your armor, you got you got to make sure that you are very very clean before the Lord. You know, make sure that every sin that you confess it, repent of it, uh, cover it by the blood of Jesus. Because if you don't, you know, it it will. You know, you know what's it called. They they will try their best, either trying to bring you back under sin, or that possessed person will tell you your secret, uh, uh, secret sin to the whole congregation, and it will be bad. Um, I tell you, it, it it's going to be bad. So always be. Clean out before you do any deliverance to anyone. Uh, make sure you're reading the Word of God, praying, um, being covered by His blood. Uh, secondly, we should expect the gospel to come in power to triumph over the works of the devil. And we see this again in Acts chapter 8 verse 7, Acts chapter 26 verse 18, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 4 through 5, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3 through 4, and 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. And I close with this, I close with this, um, the spiritual realm is real. We we should be aware of spiritual warfare, even you know even if we go through a tough time, you know. Uh, Ninety percent of the chance, the enemy is, is targeting at you, but the ten percent of the you know maybe it's. Uh, maybe it's um, how to say. You know, either you lose you uh, you lose your job because of the financial well, yeah, losing your job at you know some type of economical changes that you lost your job. You know, the ten percent that that may be a case, or you know, the enemy is attacking your body. The enemy is attacking you because you are on fire for God and that uh, you know for a fact that Satan really hates you, demons really hate you because you are strong in the Lord. Because if you if you if you understand the power of the Holy Spirit within you, they're gonna hate your guts. And that uh, you're gonna be the most wanted list in hell. Because you are not only your preaching the gospel but you're ministering to people. You are trying to reach people for the gospel. You're trying to teach the body of Christ. You equip the saints. You know, um, you got, you got you got to understand. You know, the Lord will show you things that 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 that's in His Word. You know, uh, that there's anger, there's jealousy, that there's there's just about trying to kill every Christian out there. I tell you, because understand that. This is real. Spiritual warfare is real. This is not a game. So, I'll leave it at that. And, and you search out the scriptures on your own. You know, test test everything that I uh, taught you today. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, again, may God bless you and keep you. And I'll see you again later. Um, I was thinking about, you know, doing, like, some type of, some type of, uh, you know, one of those um, devotional videos, you know, spontaneous devotional videos that the Lord lay on my heart to share with you guys. But, yeah, you know, may God bless you and keep you, and I'll see you again later.